Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Where I come from, we have four seasons in the year. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. But imagine what it would be like if there were only three seasons and one of them was eliminated. If I had to choose, I would eliminate spring because whenever there's spring, it's daylight savings time. And that means we have to spring forward when it occurs, which means I lose an hour of sleep, which I've already been doing on a regular basis lately. And I hate it. Why am I awake right now? Jimmy Neutron is one of the most iconic Nickelodeon cartoons of the early 2000s. It was also the first CGI animated TV show produced for the network, back when CGI was still in its early years, but was quickly starting to become more widespread around this time, especially with the classic Pixar films released during this point. Jimmy Neutron started with a theatrical film in late 2001 and was nominated for an Oscar but lost to everybody's favorite Shrek 1 film, Shrek 1. The popularity of the film led to a TV show that lasted three seasons and ended in late 2006. But what if I told you that there was going to be a season 4? What? That's right. A full fourth season of The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius was planned at one point. But unfortunately, it had to be cancelled. I remember learning about this back in 2017 and was both amazed to find out what they had planned for the season and devastated that the season didn't come to fruition. So today, let's talk about what is currently known about that cancelled season that we never got. But before we start, let's talk about why this season never came to be. Because unlike Victoria's, there was an actual reason as to why we never got season 4 of Jimmy Neutron. DNA Productions was the animation studio that animated Jimmy Neutron back in the day. It was co-founded in 1987 by Jimmy Neutron's creator, John A. Davis, and his partner, Keith Alcorn. After hearing about the pitch for Jimmy Neutron, known as Johnny Quasar at this time, in 1995, Steve Udekirk partnered with the studio to make two TV specials, The O Show and Santa vs. the Snowman, for a release in 1997. That same year, Udekirk started talking to Nickelodeon to make a movie and TV show about Johnny Quasar. In 1999, production began and the film released in December 2001 under the title Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius with the TV series The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius following suit in July 2002. Jimmy Neutron was a massive success. In the mid-2000s, DNA Productions also worked on another film to release in 2006, The Ant Bully, which was about a kid who was bullied who took his anger out on ants, but the ants retaliated by shrinking him down to their size and fighting back. The movie bombed in the box office and unfortunately shut down DNA Productions in the process. As a result, the planned season 4 had to be scrapped altogether. Well, at least I can say that's a better reason for a good Nickelodeon show to be cancelled compared to other reasons. While that is a fair reason, since DNA Productions animated the show and made it look so good back in the day, I don't think another studio couldn't have possibly animated the show and it wouldn't have felt the same at all. Hell, after DNA Productions shut down, Steve Woodekirk founded Omation Entertainment and rehired most of the animators, and they went on to create the Barnyard film and the Back of the Barnyard TV series, and the animation there felt like more of a wackier take on Jimmy Neutron. So I think that season 4 could have been animated under Omation, as long as the fans could have waited just a bit longer for this season considering all the behind the scenes changes, I would have been okay with that. Nickelodeon at the time couldn't afford to purchase DNA Productions themselves, which was another factor why we couldn't get the season 4. Bullshit. At this time, Nickelodeon was firing at all cylinders with amazing shows and lots of home media releases. The Jimmy Timmy Power Hour trilogy was amazing and got so many views when they came out. They could have afforded to waste money in 2006 so we could have gotten season 4 of Jimmy Neutron? That wouldn't have made up for other things they did, but still! And now that we know why it didn't happen, let's talk about what would have happened. Seasons 1 and 2 each had 20 half hours for the show, and season 3 had 21, bringing the total half hours of episodes to 61. 
Season 4 originally started out with only 18, but it was later brought to 26, which would have made Season 4 the longest season, and bringing the total number of half hours to 87. There are a lot of aspects about the season that would have made it much more different compared to the other three. For example, this season would have had a semi-serialized structure and there would have been a plot that would have progressed throughout the season every few episodes. Previously, most of the episodes were episodic and any storylines that happened outside the episodes would have been followed up on in a future season for the most part. For example, in the episode Safety First from Season 1, Jimmy makes an anti-bullying device involving two nanobots to protect him from a bully, Terry Finster. After it makes everybody at school afraid of him, he confuses the fuck out of the nanobots, which causes their machine to explode. The nanobots return in Season 2's Return of the Nanobots, where Jimmy tries to work out their bugs and now programs them to correct for error. The events of Safety First are also referenced by Carl. Um, Jimmy, is your anti-bully thing gonna beat me up again? The nanobots go berserk again and delete everybody on Earth. Adieu, 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 see you and you and you. On to Belgium. Jimmy fixes the issue and makes the ship explode again, and everybody returns from being deleted. In Season 3, the nanobots make one final appearance where they still wanted to try to help Jimmy again, but Jimmy refuses to give them another chance. The events of Return of the Nanobots are mentioned by Jimmy. After you nearly deleted everyone on Earth, nice try. When Jimmy's dad tries to make toys as a new job, the nanobots get inside the tank which ends up growing in size and causing havoc in Retroville again. And Jimmy saves the day by making the giant tank piss itself and shrink back down to size. And after that, the nanobots are never seen again. This time, there would have been more continuity between the episodes and less episodic stories like Spongebob. For example, before Season 4, most of the continuity was with character stories, like the Jimmy, Cindy, or Sheen Libby relationships. Speaking of which, aren't these characters like 11 or 12? This semi-serialized structure would have focused on the characters starting to grow up and be more mature by putting their differences aside. Most notably, Jimmy and Cindy finally deciding to stop pretending they hate each other and actually become friends, which would culminate to them ending up together by the end of the series. Now it was implied they were together by the very end, because at the end of The League of Villains, he takes her hand and they walk off together. They were also shown flirting with each other in the episode Lady Sings the News and what they were trying to hide was exposed by Libby. But this season would have officially confirmed their relationship. Nick Dean also would have had a more major role in this season. He had much more screen time in the original movie and season 1, but was more of a recurring character in seasons 2 and 3. Season 4 would have had him return to the main cast and has character expanded on more. Another overarching story that would have occurred this season would have been Jimmy and the gang starting middle school. That would have been very interesting to see, considering Miss Fowl has been such a prominent character in the series, even in the original movie. Not much is known about that, but I would have killed to know how this would have played out. While no episodes exist, we do know there have been at least four scripts that were written before the season was cancelled. Two of them are publicly available. The episode titles we know of are Deep Impacts, Three's a Crowd, A Crime of Confusion, and Interception. Deep Impacts features the return of Evil Jimmy. Hey, buddy, you want a pie? Yeah! Evil Jimmy was one of Jimmy's clones created in Season 2's Send in the Clones. Nice place, kid. You know, I could have some serious fun with this stuff. <laughs> At the end of the episodes, all of the clones were frozen except for Evil Jimmy. Later in Season 3's The Trouble with Clones, Evil Jimmy returns and clones a duplicate Earth. Right after the real Earth is saved, Evil Jimmy breaks a Dark Matter chip, sucking the whole duplicate planet Earth into the Dark Matter dimension, but the real Jimmy narrowly escapes. The end of the episode features Ain't No Lovin' My Man and this line from Evil Jimmy. <laughs> You're not going to get away with this, Whippy Dip. You can't keep an evil clone down. I'll be back. Which implies that he was going to return in some way. If Season 4 had existed, this probably would have happened. And what do you know? It was going to. 
The season premiere, Deep Impacts, features Jimmy taking the class on a field trip to the moon to see an asteroid crash into it, and he encounters evil Jimmy and the other evil classmates, who had escaped from the dark matter dimension with a little teleportation device he made called the Dimensional Q that can allow him to travel through dimensions if he should choose to. The other evil clones try to attack their good counterparts while evil Jimmy plans on using the asteroid approaching the moon to destroy the Earth. The real Jimmy uses Brobot as a distraction in exchange for Jimmy playing with him once a week on the moon. The good characters attack evil clones that aren't their own evil counterparts and manage to defeat them. The real Jimmy tricks evil Jimmy into blowing up the ship and he manages to stop the asteroid from destroying Earth. All the evil clones are defeated and sent back to the dark matter dimension, and Jimmy sets the dimensional cube to prevent evil Jimmy from returning again. With everything back to normal, Brobot is happy Jimmy can finally play with him again. Back in the dark matter dimension, the episode ends with another cliffhanger showing that evil Jimmy managed to capture one of the normal classmates and brought him or her into the dark matter dimension, which implies there may have been another episode that season with evil Jimmy. Or maybe he would have joined the League of Villains later on at the end of the season. But we'll get to that later. I also didn't mention Betty Quinlan in that episode, so let's fix that real quick. In several episodes of the show, Jimmy is shown to have a crush on a girl named Betty Quinlan, much to Cindy's annoyance. Season 3's Vanishing Act reveals that Betty only considers Jimmy a friend following a heated argument between Jimmy and Cindy. Just relax and keep on my face. He's all yours. But the series finale, The League of Villains, shows that Jimmy isn't quite over her just yet, as evident by the multiple pics of Betty Quinlan in his lap. The next episode, Three's a Crowd, would have resolved this issue too. This episode would have focused on Cindy, Libby, and Betty getting stuck in Jimmy's lap. Jimmy had just improved his lab security system, but he needs to check the circuit boards on Vox to make sure everything's okay. Jimmy warns everybody he needs more time to work out the kinks, but nobody paid any attention. Later that day, Jimmy and Sheen go to a Llama Love Society meeting with Carl after they accidentally obliterate his bedroom somehow. Even with the outline of the script I'm looking at, I can't explain this one either. After the guys leave, Cindy wants to sneak into Jimmy's lab and look at his blueprints to see what he's working on. Betty Quinlan walks by and says that Jimmy gave her a tour over spring break. Cindy gets annoyed and decides to prove to Betty that she knows more about Jimmy's lab. When they go there, Vox recognized Cindy and Libby, but Cindy's voice accidentally made Vox think that Betty was the villain Beautiful Gorgeous, and the three of them were trapped in Jimmy's new security system. They try to find their way out while being bombarded with intruder robots, but they didn't have much luck. Cindy notices a section called the Neutron Disposal Sector taped off containing old inventions and the Betty Quinlan photos that Jimmy said he would get rid of. Cindy was more furious than ever that Jimmy was still stuck on Betty and snapped at her saying that she was the worst ever. Jimmy can't help his own emotions, Cindy. Cindy couldn't quite get out why she hated Betty, but it was obvious it was because she liked Jimmy and hated that Jimmy liked Betty. Then Cindy found a photo in Jimmy's drawer of him and Cindy together and instantly felt better. They escaped the lab via Jimmy's escape chute and ended up in Jimmy's living room. The next day, Cindy apologized to Betty and they seemed to make up, but their conversation was interrupted when Sheen came into the room. When Jimmy and Carl arrived, Betty left and Jimmy questioned why the two of them were talking. After school, Jimmy went to his lab, but Vox mistook him for evil Jimmy and he was sucked down into his lab and saw his lab trash and roared Cindy's name in anger over the mess that was made out of his new security system. Those are the only two scripts officially revealed, but the titles and synopses of the other two are known as well. The first of these two episodes is A Crime of Confusion, which was about Jimmy, Carl, Sheen, Cindy, and Libby in Principal Willoughby's office after they broke Miss Fowl's mug. All of them were distracted when they broke it, so they all give their own take on the situation and nothing gets resolved. The other episode we know of is Interception, where the gang go inside Sheen's dreams to rid him of his obsession with Ultra Lord. Hey, you never know, 15 years from now his obsession with Ultra Lord could have come in handy somehow.
Without scripts, I can only assume that these are 11 minute episodes, as the scripts for Deep Impacts and Three's a Crowd show that those are clearly 22 minute episodes. So those are the actual episode titles that have been revealed for Season 4 of Jimmy Neutron at this point. But we do have some more concepts that most likely would have been made into a full episode, or something that was considered, but ultimately dropped. Something that was ultimately dropped was April the Gorlock. I am she ah! but, but you could just call me April. In the season 2 finale, Win, Lose, and Kaboom, Jimmy and his friends end up competing on an intergalactic game show called Intergalactic Showdown, which puts the entire planet of Earth at stake. After Jimmy meets up with April, he decides to make an alliance to stop the host Meldar from continuing with the game show. After Jimmy and his friends win, the humans, Gorlocks, Needleheads, and Brains all team up to put an end to the show once and for all. The plan is successful, and Jimmy seems to have taken a bit of a liking to April during this, again to Cindy's disdain. At the end of the movie, Jimmy and April still keep in touch with warp mail which is sent to each other via the space rocks, right before Jimmy and Cindy kiss too. Jeez Cindy, get a hold of yourself. The producers considered bringing April back for season 4 by the finale, but they ultimately decided against it since they didn't see much of a purpose to it because Jimmy and Cindy would have been together by that point. Speaking of the finale, the series finale that we did get was called The League of Villains and features every villain that Jimmy ever defeated teaming up to annihilate him for good. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. This episode does feature a sizable amount of villains including... King Gooba, Baby Eddie, Grandma Taters, the Jumpman, Eustace, Professor Calamitous, Beautiful, Gorgeous, Zix, Travolta, and T! How come he said my name last? Well, what about Evil Jimmy? Dr. Moist? Meldar Prime? Buford Lee Stormshuckle? Seymour Nibblefarm? Hell, let's throw in the Nanobots and Flippy because why not? Well, maybe they left those villains out because they were planning on bringing them back for this episode. Throughout the season, the League of Villains would be planning another scheme to eliminate Jimmy once and for all. This would have featured old villains from throughout the series and new ones introduced in Season 4. It would all build up to the finale where the villains unleashed their scheme to take down Jimmy. But of course, Jimmy and all his other friends would take down the League of Villains for good. It's possible that this episode would have featured every villain I previously mentioned to see what they could do to Jimmy and his friends. And that is everything we currently know about the cancelled Season 4 of Jimmy Neutron. Going over all of that just makes me wish that the season existed more than ever. I would have loved to see Evil Jimmy return again, as well as Cindy finally putting the past behind her so she and Betty are finally friends. I also would have loved to see Brobot return in Deep Impact and see how he would have helped Jimmy save the world from Evil Jimmy. I love the original League of Villains episode. T. You broke my heart. I'm gonna break your face! So I would have loved to see what they would have done with a sequel to that one. I also think it would have been great to see the characters mature this season, starting to put their differences aside and become closer with each other. As for Jimmy and Cindy no longer bickering, there are upsides and downsides to that in my opinion. On one hand, it's great to see them mature and finally become friends. They always did like each other, but since they were young, it makes sense as to why they bicker like that. But on the other hand, they had a lot of banter that was some of the best parts of the show. But I bet the next one stinks. Well, who says I'm gonna invite you? Well, who says I'd even go? Who says I'd want you to go? On the other side of the same coin, there were a few instances where Cindy picking on Jimmy did feel a little mean-spirited at times. Listen, William of Orange, I've had enough of this wee business. You know what your power is? Super irritation! <laughs> Well, I guess if they could find a way to keep the banter but get rid of the mean spirit of nature of some of this, then it'd be pretty good. Same with the other characters. I hope they can still keep the banter between them despite all of the characters maturing at that point. I also think it would have been neat to see April return to see what she would contribute to the finale, but at the same time, I also agree it wasn't necessary to bring her back. Now in terms of what I would want to see that wasn't mentioned here, I wish we got to see more episodes focused on Goddard. <laughs> Despite being a main character in the series, Goddard only had one episode focused on him, Season 3's Best in Show, where he becomes depressed after being disqualified from a pet show for being a robot dog, which was a rule that robot dogs couldn't compete since they weren't considered real pets. 
There was also Elkie Eckberg, a character introduced in Season 3's Carl Weezer Boy Genius, who was a love interest to Carl. Elkie? Yeah? While that episode was mean-spirited on Carl's end, I feel the character had potential, and I would have liked to see her interact with Cindy, Libby, Goddard, etc. Since the episode Deep Impacts focuses on Evil Jimmy's return, I wonder if the cliffhanger at the end would have led to another episode with him, or with Evil Jimmy joining the League of Villains in the finale. In terms of the middle school story, I want to know if they would have continued to use Miss Fowl in the show when the gang started middle school. I also would have liked to see what new villains they would have come up with in season 4. The possibilities are endless with this show. According to the wiki, there was an actual attempt back in 2020 to revive the series and a lot of people were on board with it. The original creator, voice actors, hell, even some of the Nickelodeon executives were on board too. So there you go, it was right there to revive the series! And yet, it never happened! And with all the unnecessary reboots that exist today, I am shocked that out of all the ones that were greenlit, Jimmy Neutron never was. Also, I wonder where else they would have taken the Sheen Libby relationship. That would have been neat to see. Jimmy Neutron is one of my all time favorite Nickelodeon shows, and it will never not be a damn shame that this season 4 never got to exist. And knowing what they had planned for it just makes me even more upset that we never got it. But it's nice to know that they did have a season 4 planned at some point, so there's that. Hmm, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, right! Why was the revival can? Well, looking back, it says one of the Nickelodeon executives turned it down because there wasn't enough- I am so angry over the reason why Jimmy Neutron was never revived that I'm burning my own shoes. Those were also my only shoes. F*** you, Nickelodeon. Now I gotta go buy more shoes.